This is actually a windshield wiper that's completely off the truck near the headlights. There's also this emergency light where we normally look for on top of any sort of fire truck. One of the things is just letting your faucet drip. Now, it doesn't have to be a constant drip like this, but Roto-Rooter says make sure it is cold water that is dripping. Not only are you going to see changes to the outside, like here with this big Hornet sign, but as you walk in, you're going to see a lot of changes as well. This is the flight status board, and of course, it's been changing all day. Now, the last two flights leaving Springfield, they're delayed. There were kids here for the last, up until the last 30 minutes, actually, sledding down the hills here at Jordan Valley. There are still some mobile homes standing tall, but others are reduced to just cinder block and pieces of wood. Perez faces a total of five life sentences. Three of those are for the three murders without the possibility of parole. The spillway gates are closed right now, guys, but if there is any flooding event, those engineers will open them partially. The body the cam video you're about to see is from November 27th. Now the video is currently circling social media and has over 20,000 views. Some here in Houston tell me they're not happy with how the officer was treated. Get out of here, sir. Go. Stop, sir. Stop. To be anti-law enforcement here. Nobody's going to tolerate it. George Schultz lives outside of Houston. He works in town and heard about an argument with law enforcement and the mayor. Body camera video from November 27th shows a Houston police officer walking into the Highway 63 pit stop, which Mayor Willie Walker owns. He then goes inside and approaches a man who he believes drove to the gas station drunk. I got a call stated that they believe that he'd be intoxicated. Okay. Have you had any drink today? No. No. The officer eventually detains the man and asks for surveillance video to prove it. When Mayor Walker and others arrive, Walker refuses. Thanks. Uh, guy, he's drunk. I need to see the camera. Uh, this is a drunk guy. It's My cool. cameras are for you guys. No. Okay. Ever. Okay. Okay. So these are private cameras. Right, so okay, I want it in writing that you even requested that. Things quickly escalate from there with both men demanding the officer leave. You need to leave. Get here. the f out of here. You Don't ever pull back on this parking lot again. You I told to you that for one business. I'm telling you with this one. I'm telling you as a business owner, politely, you need right. to leave here. Uh, the mayor allowed it to happen. He was right there, and it riled me up. For Schultz, he didn't agree with how the situation was handled. We're not going to tolerate in our community anybody, elected official specifically, that doesn't support law enforcement. But he was in the wrong because he allowed someone to disrespect law enforcement. I wouldn't allow a stranger to do it, and I'm certainly not going to allow a family member or a business partner to do it. Color 10 reached out to Mayor Walker. His office said he was not in the office Thursday, but neighbors like Schultz are wanting answers. You cannot be this way to law enforcement without repercussion. You can see the damage to this truck is extensive. The windshield completely gone. Windshield wipers broken and hanging above headlights. Even the emergency lights dangling from the front of the truck and even part of the roof caved in. Edward Lampke says after seeing all of this damage, he's very lucky to be alive and also have the support from the community. We all face dangerous every time we go on a call, period. For volunteer firefighter Edward Lamke, he knew the risks when he started at Central Polk County Fire back in 2019. I mean, you try to. You try to plan for any event. It's just, you can't see everything coming. Five days ago, Lamke faced one of those risks. He was responding to a fire, and winter weather made the roads slick in Polk County. Couldn't have been doing more than 15, 18 miles per hour. I mean, it just, it went. Before he knew it, the truck slid off the road and rolled into a ditch. He's entrapped in the truck with his arm pinned below the steering wheel. Um, so at that point, then we start a full response, uh, get mutual aid departments. Lamke spent roughly four days in the hospital. I have a burst fracture in my spine. Lieutenant Tom Morris was there every day. The first day, not knowing where we was going to be, was very emotional. 
Lamke made it out of the hospital Tuesday and went to see the damage to the fire truck for the first time Wednesday. Feeling pretty lucky. Lamke also feels lucky for the support he's received, especially for his injuries. We knew that he needed a ramp before we could get him home. I made two phone calls and I had 10 guys from area departments out there and in less than an hour we put a ramp on the front of his house. Now Lamke will rest until he can get back to doing what he loves. I can't see me doing anything different now than what I, what I do here. This meeting is packed. There are still a few people filing in. We actually had to step outside because there are just so many homeowners here hoping to voice their frustrations and concerns. The Multi-State Environmental Trust is currently digging up yards looking for places that they believe have some contamination. And for one woman who's lived in her home for over 40 years, she says it's too late. Burnt tar or something. It was a ter it's a terrible smell. It's a smell June Smith will never forget. The smell of chemical preservatives leaking into her backyard. Every Friday night, they released the creosote, and I have a ditch out there in back, and it smelled so bad you could not be outside. It would burn your eyes. It would hurt so bad. Although that smell is gone, the impact from Kerr McGee Wood Treatment Facility is still there. There's two more places out here. The multi-state environmental trust agency is digging up Smith's yard looking for a creosote as she lives just feet away from the decommissioned facility. And those are chemicals that are considered carcinogenic chemicals or chemicals that um, have the potential right to cause cancer. For Smith, cancer is something she knows too well. Everybody in this neighborhood has died of cancer. I can take you from house to house. My husband died, so it's very much bad stuff. It's a result of Kerr McGee. Now crews are looking at seven houses between North Fulbright and Clifton Avenue where they believe the soil is contaminated. If those results come back above these protective levels of these levels of protective of human health, um, we will move forward with removing soils from those yards backfilling with clean soil and then restoring the landscaping. They just finished yesterday digging in my backyard. And what did they find? They won't tell me. <laughs> now Smith will wait for answers as she thinks about what could have happened if action was taken earlier. It's too late. 